Okay, so I am going to uh, make some videos. First, I'm going to make a video where this one here. I'm going to show you a little bit about mods, how to use uh, Vortex and Nexus, and uh, just let you know why I prefer uh, GOG over Steam for buying PC games. And uh, I will admit, Steam has a bigger library, but uh, with GOG, um, you pretty much own the game. Steam, if they decide to kick a game out of a, their library because uh, they don't think it's popular enough to use or to keep, uh, you'll lose all your rights to it. But GOG will let you install that ga game on any device with, with no questions asked. You pay for that right. And they're uh, sometimes actually cheaper than Steam because they run a lot of sales. And they're owned by CG, uh, CD Project. Same people who made uh, The Witcher and uh, Cyberpunk. That's the other one I was thinking of. Okay, so first thing you want to do is get Vortex. This is Vortex. Take a second to open up. Maybe, maybe not. There you go. It's a mod manager, and it's linked to the Nexus mod site. And you can search for hundreds of mods for different games. I got 27 mods that I'm going to be reviewing the ones that I'm using now. These are mods that I'm not using now just because they were mods I was just kind of playing with. And uh, But these are the ones I want to show you all how to use to make the game better. And this is going to be a long series because I am going to start the game from the beginning to pretty much the end. And every time we something happens that's because of a mod, I'm going to highlight that to the best of my ability. And I'm not the best at this. I'm learning. Maybe I'll be pretty good by the end of it. But anyhow, so minimize this. We're going to go to uh, Google. And what you want to do in Google is just search for Vortex. Vortex Mod Manager, and you're going to click on this, and I'm already signed in, but if you don't have an account and you're not signed in, you'll be greeted with a page that says uh, sign in or set up an account. When you set up an account, all you got to have is an email address, and, uh, and then you got to put in a password, and then there's a place where you can, you know, fill out, you know, it'll ask you like your profile, and uh, say I'm Snow Dogs, and, uh, but, so it's pretty easy, so you're going to get that, you're going to get your account set up, and you're going to download Vortex and install it. A little tip about Vortex, uh, if you use a second drive for your games, you want to put Vortex on the same drive. Like I have a D drive. I put all my gaming stuff on there. So what happens is uh, Vortex, if it's on the C drive and you want to uh, install all the mods on a on the D, on your in your game folder on the D drive, it'll tell you that they need to be in the same uh, the same drive. Now there's a hard link thing you can do to fix that but it's a lot easier if you just install Vortex on your D drive or whatever drive you got your games on and then you run it. So you're going, for MechWarrior you're going to download this first. Okay, and you're going to install it. Then uh, if you already got MechWarrior installed you can have it search for games and, and it's got a place where you type in like the game you, you want to search for and, and it'll bring up Mech Warrior Mercenaries and Mech Warrior Online. But uh, you uh, once you get the 
Mech Warrior come up, it might not download this extension. Uh, I mean, with me, I've already been using uh, Vortex, and uh, but when they put this this extension for Mech Warrior came out, it automatically I started it up one day and it just said you know new extension found and I installed it and Vortex started really taking charge. I mean, when you install a mod, it installs it, manages it. If you if you disable it or uninstall it, it does all that. You don't have to go into the settings on the game and check and uncheck mods. Uh, I would suggest the first time you run it to make sure I'm not lying that you go into the mods and you make sure that all the mod mods that you just installed had check marks by them but I think Vortex will take care of all that so now you've got Vortex installed and then you're gonna go to uh, let's see Warrior. Let's go. Enter. Mac Warrior Five. Come on. I know you guys don't want to just sit here and listen to me gab. Vortex support. will get us there. Yeah, so here you go. Make Warrior 5 Mercenaries Vortex support. So you click on that and it's going to take you here and then you're going to download this and install it. And it's going to put an extension in there. So then all you got to do is open up Vortex and then see where it says get more mods. Well, if you don't have any mods, it'll say, you have no mods. Don't worry, I know where you can get them. And you'll click on it, and it'll take you out here, and you'll sign in. Now, Vortex will prompt you to link your account so that y you can be signed. Anytime you launch Vortex, you're signed into here. But if you go to the mods, and you just click, like, mod categories, I mean, you can search for mods or whatever. So, look at all the mods there are. There's tons of them. In uh, it says 716 mods, but so you can you can just browse through these and find mods that you like. Uh, there's all kinds of mods in there. I'll leave that up to you all. Okay, so now, uh, and then like okay, so all these mods here up in here. I've just disabled them. All you have to do to re-enable them is hit enable. Now, if you go to, you do this and go to disable again. That didn't do it. Okay, no, it's this. It's uninstall. If you click uninstall, it's going to come up and, oh no. Yeah, see here it's asking you if you really want to get rid of it. And I'm going to just say cancel. Okay, so, because I don't want to uninstall it. I did uninstall it. Did I uninstall the original one? Oh, no, here it is down here. I don't want to advance in. Okay. I got simple zoom. All right, I'm already messing this video up, but we are going to salvage it, maybe. There it is. It's still in there. Yeah, there's two versions of that. There's simple zoom and advanced zoom. And since I don't, I use a controller. Uh, the advanced zoom features aren't activated on a controller, so I just use the simple zoom. Uh, there's a lot more features in advanced zoom. 
Okay, so, but to completely get rid of them, you right click it and go to uh, remove, and it would prompt you with whether or not you wanted to completely, absolutely remove it or keep the files, but just get rid of it out of here. So, but anyhow, another thing about Vortex is you can click check for updates. And it'll automatically go out to Nexus and find, and it will find updates for you, and prompt you to download them. And uh, if it's just one file, it'll automatically download it. If there's different versions of that file, like some of these mods are vanilla, some of them are Clan uh, Invasion, just different things. Okay, so the first things that you want is so. Expanded logos. That's that's a mod that I just took on for whenever you uh, rename the leopard. You know, rename your lance. It's just a bunch of different logos. Expanded pilots is good. This pilot overhaul. Uh, this really is good. It gives you a lot of pilots. It gives you missions to go out and uh, uh, help pilots out of jams, and then they be they join your crew uh, this is just for looks uh, ammo weight system is really good it cuts the ammo weight in half so that uh, if you want two tons of ammo instead of taking two tons it's only using one because it's one point it's point five tons and it also gives you a little filler ammo where if you want to put a point two five twenty five on there it gives you a quarter of a ton uh, Better Markets is a mod that uh, you're always going to find tier 5 and tier 4 weapons in the marketplace and they'll be advertised when you're when you're going to a hub there'll be a little thing that says you know three unique weapons two unique weapons and and that and then you can go shopping if you got the money Better Salvage Shares just gives you just what it says you get a little bit better salvage sh shares instead of getting three points of salvage uh, per your reputation points, you're going to get uh, five. Change company name. That's just, I don't even know if I ever use that. That's so you can change the company name mid flight if you want to. Uh, Classic Mech Collection is really, really good. It's got a lot of uh, Mech Warrior 4, Mech Warrior 2 mechs in it. Uh, you know, probably a dozen. And surprisingly, they are stout. That takes a lot to bring them down. They'll, they'll take a lot of damage. Coyote Missions is one of the best mods. We'll probably highlight that a lot because uh, it's it makes the game so much more fun. It surprises you. Things can be just come out of nowhere that you you never thought you'd get into that kind of situation. And, and it's fun to get out of them. Potential Pilot Split. That's um, a mod. I can't remember exactly what it does, but what we can we can cover it. And all you got to do if you want to look at these mods once you get them installed, I mean, anytime you want to look at them, you can say open on, up and up a mex Nexus. And so it just uh, makes your pilots have them better skills. Um, that mod I might not even need because I think the Pilot 360 mod, because you can have pilots like. My commander Mason is uh, level 91 now, so they they level up over 60, and always get elite pilots. And there's settings uh, in the in the mod settings. I'll show I'll have to show you where that is when we get that far. Uh, so back to this. Uh, mech delivery is really good. What that does is when you go to industrial hub and you're repairing your mechs. You have an option if you got the C bills to buy mechs. I mean, every mech that's in the roster. Uh, if you got the clan mechs and you haven't found ones through your set scavenging and salvaging, you could actually buy it, and it'll take like 60 days to get shipped to the leopard. And uh, and then the best thing about this is you can buy weapons and equipment tier 5, tier 4, tier whatever you want. Every one of them's in there. Ammo's in there. Uh, the 
the tier four and the tier two weapons it only allows you to buy two at a time but you can buy if you got the sea bills you could buy two of everything in there or everything you think you're going to need like I was on a, a deal where I was trying to get level or tier four weapons and I was buying tier four tier four medium lasers tier four LRM 10 ST uh, tier four ER PPCs because the tier fives are pretty expensive after you get a lot of money then you can start buying tier fives or you could just buy a little bit of tier four or tier fives at a time so you don't go broke you gotta watch your C bills because I have gotten a situation once where I didn't have enough C bills to fly anywhere to do a mission to make more C bills and I didn't have enough C bills to pay my uh, overhead so C bills the, when you first start the game you need to focus more on C bills than you do uh, salvage then after you get a lot of C bills but some of these bonds I'm going to show you are going to show you how to get tons of mechs and that's where you're going to make your C bills you pick and choose what you want you put them in cold storage so that you don't lose any of the weapons and then you sell them and then when you want to spend some time selling weapons and odds and ends you can you know like say you got 256 uh, level zero uh, medium lasers and you only want to keep 20 or 30 in inventory you can go out to industrial hub and just sit there click 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 and sell as many of them as you want now I keep a minimum of 10 of everything I get just because of the cantina missions the cantina missions will uh, have some missions like uh, you know weapons collector or equipment I can't remember what it's called but we'll cover that when we get into in there when we get in there but I've never seen them ask for more than 10 of anything usually it's three or four but if you got all that in your inventory when you come across one of those missions you can say yeah I want to do it and then as soon as you click you got it you can collect on it and then go get another one and it's the same way with some of these mechs it'll ask you for one one or two uh, of certain types of mechs well if you already got them in your inventory because you junked them then uh, you get that instant money right then and those instant cantina points which gives you the option to uh, add uh, how do you want to say it it's perks for your mechs like uh, uh, more damage more distance in your missiles uh, more armor and uh, structural strength and, and you get all that as you complete it the more you level up in the cantina missions the more of those you get uh, mech compatible compatibility pack uh, I definitely put that in there there's some mods that require it the mod options you're gonna have to use because uh, there's uh, mods that I use if you use them you'll need the mod options to set them up and we'll cover that next-gen pirate pi pilots is good no friendly fire actually works and I'm using it right now I got all four four DLCs and uh, it's what it says you will not damage your lance mates and they will not damage you now I haven't tested it on any of your extra supports you get you know like when you drop and it says save these you know defeat op 4 before they kill the the mechs that are already there and you got two you need to save I've never looked started shooting them to see if it did any damage to them or not but no friendly fire works definitely for your lance mates accidentally hitting you and you actually didn't hit accidentally hit your lance mate the only thing that's bad about that is I really miss the times when you shoot somebody and they say oh commander you want to play it that way you know <laughs> stuff like that no storage cost just what it says you don't have to pay any anything for storage uh, paint scheme paint paint schemes is just what it says it is when you're painting your mechs it gives you more to choose from I actually do a custom scheme uh, theme okay so perfect potential pilots that's makes your p pilots more unique pilots. And actually I think that that one there gives you more uh, more pilots to pick from faces because you can change the faces 
Yeah, this just gives you more pilots to, to pick from. Uh, but you can read all these uh, just like what I'm... I mean, when you go out, if you, I'll, I'll put a list of all these in my description. And if you go out, you can read them. And if you don't like them, you don't want to use them, don't, don't use them. I'm just showing you what I use, and I'm going to... Quick arm repair. That actually cuts the repair of uh, armor down like... Uh, I'm gonna say it cuts it in half. Uh, I'm not sure how much, but all I know is like if if you're uh, if you repair your mechs, if if you're out on a mission and your mechs get pretty well damaged, now if they have to get stuff replaced other than armor, it takes a little bit longer. But it takes from one to two days, and if you're trying to repair in uh, conflict zones, it only takes three days. But uh, repair bays, repair bays are great. So what this mod does is it adds repair bays to about, I'm going to say 30% of the maps. It probably says in the mod description. But the good thing about this that makes it profitable for you is in those mods where you, uh, you, you beat 27 mechs, but then you can hang out to collect more sea bills if you kill some more. Well, you got a repair bay, so when a wave comes in, you after you're through with the repair bay, you can... Or after you're through with the wave, you can run to the repair bay. And there's a setting in this in mod options that you can say repair bays never get destroyed and repairs the entire lance. So these mods, a lot of them, if you think they're too much of a cheat, you can tone them down in the mod options. Restore traits, what that is is if you, if you have weapons and armor and uh, upgrades on your mech when you save the mech it'll keep all that on them instead of stripping it and it gives you the option to put to do that or to strip it now the only thing that I need to say about this mod is uh, I use a controller because I want to sit back on the couch in front of my 55 inch TV and just controller I don't want a keyboard and mouse so if you go into the the cold storage and you use the controller to add it back for some reason it strips all it strips everything off it you get a you get a mech that's 100 percent repaired but doesn't have nothing on it so I found out that and I do have a little keyboard and mouse that's about the size of a controller and you use your finger to move it around like I'm doing right now uh, if you drag it if you grab the mech you want and drag it to the empty spot it'll retain everything so that's the only time in this whole game unless I'm typing in text that I use a keyboard and mouse all the rest of its controllers simple zoom is just a, a zoom feature um, and I like it I use it I like it stack crates very excellent mod so what this does is it adds more crates for salvage on missions not all of them but a lot of them and with coyote mods with the coyote mod uh, I'm going to show you how this is real because there's a lot of a lot of stuff involved in this uh, you you can get clan loot, you can get uh, Star League loot, uh, but the guy made it really interesting. Any of the major loots like clan or Star League, they're going to be guarded by five or six mechs on average, sometimes only three or four, but a lot of times five or six in the higher tier levels like drops that take 400 tons. And <coughs> they are, they aren't, you know, they, they're going to be hard to kill because they're going to be bigger, you know, even in a 200 ton drop, you're going to run into mechs that are, that outweigh you. You're going to have to use strategy to beat them. Uh, one thing I found out is if you, if you go in and it has like search, you know, uh, scan these anomalies, those are where the, the big bucks are, the big rewards. Well, they're usually guarded. And if you drop and there's five or six of those and you, you go through there and 
you've only done two of them and and you still got to do the mission after you chase these crates down and uh they're gonna you can restart just go into the deal and restart the mission and it's like a shuffling a deck of cards it'll change and you can just do it until you like you only want to do two or you only want to do three sometimes there won't be any it's all of a just a pick of the draw and this has adjustments for uh, like I got mine set up to as soon as I land I want to know where every crate is and they show up on your map and then there's a tower and I got it set to the highest point so that uh, you can actually see them looking if if they're within visual range you can see them so you can see them as you're going up to them uh, one thing about it is though is if you go up to them and uh, you get close like you haven't scanned it yet to pick it up but it'll disappear from the map but that tower will always stay there until you confiscate that equipment and these have lots of I mean you're gonna find mechs you're gonna find tier you're gonna find weapons uh, beagle active probes ECMs all that stuff or, and, and you'll never have to buy one of those because you'll, you'll get so many of that kind of stuff in this and and the mechs are random and uh, there's an adjustment in there like I just got mine set up to go two tiers above what my tier is so you you can tell it okay so I'm level 5 but I want to get level 15 equipment you can set it for that but I set mine up for two tiers so if I'm a level 5 I want to get level 6 and level 7 uh, max and the thing about that the reason I wanted to go with that is in the beginning of the game you're only going to have 150 145 tons of max and then you might be eventually build up to 200, 220 tons of mechs. But you're going to get early on, you're going to get some missions that want 270 tons, 315 tons. It just depends on which part of the sphere you go into. So I wanted to get a little bit higher so that I would have a little bit higher uh, mechs to fight with. Now, don't get me wrong. You can still do some damage if you if you use your strategy. You can do some damage with the smaller mechs, uh, especially if you can get them equipped with tier four and tier five weapons, because weapons and heat sinks and armor. I build all my mechs. I max the armor out first. I add the weapons and ammo, and then I put the heat sinks on. And another thing about stacked crates and the coyote missions, you're going to get all kinds of double heat sinks. Uh, I'm at level 15 now on this particular run through. I got like 815 double heat sinks, and I've never had to pay for one of them. Uh, well, not a lie. When I first started, I was using the mech, deli uh, mech delivery system, and I was buying some. But uh, the thing is, is because I wanted them. But the thing is, is uh, I have still not seen a double heat sink in the in the market but I have over 800 of them and that's all from stack crates and coyote missions and a little bit of the like I said when I first started I was buying them uh, out of the mech delivery system uh, time overhaul no weapons so he has one out here that gives you something on weapons uh, this just makes it so that uh, when you travel from uh, place to place uh, it takes less time, costs less C bills, and uh, it's it's about seven seven days a jump. You know, for each little jump point you got to go through to get to a destination, it's about seven days, which that gives you time. <coughs> excuse me, time for uh, building your lance and getting more C bills and getting better weapons before you have to go fight some of the campaign missions. Uh, so you're you're up. You got the you got the pilots. You got the weapons. You got the max. Under tonnage bonus is really good. If you go in and uh, do a, a a drop that's uh, under the tonnage, based on how much you're under that, it gives you extra salvage points and extra uh, sea bills. So uh, on a 400 ton um, 
map, I will take three atlases and a cyclops. That's my favorite loadout for big big boys. And uh, so I usually get it's I can't I think it's based on the percentage of what you're allowed, but like if my reputation is 15 and I'm maxed out with uh, Davion or whoever, uh, it'll uh, it's it's about 10 or 12 percent of that, and then you also get the money. So you may get 10 points, eight points more uh, for salvage, and then you'll get a uh, oh. 300, 500,000 C bills uh, based on, but the lower you go, like if you take a 360 ton drop and you go in with 280 tons of mechs and you can st and you still come out on top, you're going to get a lot more uh, C bills and a lot more uh, salvage points. And then unlock hidden color schemes. That's another color scheme th uh, for the, for your for your mechs where when you want to paint your mech you have more to choose from okay so I've wasted enough of your time so let's see I'm going to post this and like I said my goal is to uh, do mod reviews on the mods that I use through a pl doing a play through a mech warrior and uh, please comment Please like me, uh, and I, and I'm gonna try to do something with this. So if you even feel feel strong about it, please uh, subscribe. <laughs> but uh, this is gonna be my second video for Mech Warrior that I'm posting on YouTube. But it's gonna be a start of a whole series of videos. Thank you, and I hope I can show everybody how to have a little more fun in this game. And uh, and don't call me a cheater. But if you do, that's all right. I don't care.